welcome back to Mrs. Wilson Science. Today we're going to look at the walk cycle using candy. So to do this experiment, you're just going to need a few things. You're going to need a soft stretchable candy that is ideally in different colors. And so I'm using this thing called Moem Stripes. Um, it's not what I normally use. I would usually use something like Airheads or Laffy Taffy. Um, this actually, I, I got these yesterday. I thought it'd be perfect. And then I realized they're not hugely different in color, but we'll make it work. Um, the other thing um, that you can use is gumdrops. That works really well. And if you want to move away from food, you can use crayons. Now, I have an inquiry-based lab sheet write-up that if you're a teacher, you might want to use with your students. And I'll link to that in the comments. The other thing you're going to need is a piece of aluminum or aluminum. Uh, I say aluminum now that I know the story of why it's even called that. Um, but a piece of aluminum foil and or parchment paper or something like that that will keep from getting sticky and some hot water. It's ideally boiling, but obviously be careful um, if you are a young person um, that you don't boil, uh, burn yourself on that boiling water. So you might want to get adult supervision with that. Now you could melt, we're going to use this to help us melt things, so you could use the microwave. Obviously no, if you're going to use the microwave, that could cause issues with messing things up in your microwave, and your parents might not be too happy about that, so watch out for that. All right, so the first thing we're going to do, we're going to take our bits of candy. And so um, candy, you know, it's been melted into shape, and so it's a lot like an igneous rock. Igneous rocks are made from melt, um rock that's melted in the past and then solidified. And it could have um, solidified from magma underground or lava underground, uh, above ground. So I've got these two, um, and so I've got, and you can see they're not that different in color. I've got this, this is strawberry flavor, and you can see it's got some little red specks, and then I've got this orange one, which is got some orange specks in it. So unfortunately, that's as close as we're gonna get to different colors with mine, and I apologize about that. Hopefully you at home will have other colors. You can see this a little bit better, but it's still gonna work. So I would think of these initial starting places as being um, igneous rock because of how they were made, how candy's generally made. And what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to make a sedimentary rock. So sedimentary rocks form from um, weathering or the breaking down of rock by physical or chemical processes so we're going to take the, the you're going to take your pieces of candy you're just going to break it into smaller small pieces um, and you're just going to make a pile of your pieces so if you're doing this with um, crayons you could shave your crayons if you have a, a crayon shopper you can use that um, or you could um, if you're using candy obviously you can just kind of pull it apart um, with your fingers. And so this would be an example of physical weathering. Physical weathering is breaking down rocks by physical means. Um, so it's not changing the chemical composition. This is still the same chemically as how we started, but I'm changing the um, the shape of it, the size of it, and so it's a physical change. So you can think of physical weathering as things that happen via physical changes, and chemical weathering as things that happen via chemical changes. So you're gonna go ahead and, and pull apart and you can use all of your candy, you can use part of it, it's up to you. This is quite big, so I'm just gonna um, continue to pull apart the bits of, my, of this candy until I have a good enough pile of what we need for the next step. All right, so I've got a nice little pile of sediment here. And so this isn't a rock yet, this is sediment. Sediment is just bits of um, broken down rock. And sediment can be large like this, my pieces are quite large or they could be really fine, like silt, clay, sand. Um, and basically layers of sediment over time, they'll um, come down and make layers. And eventually those layers start to compact together. And then um, sometimes there's water involved. And so that will help to dissolve some of the minerals that are in the rocks and it will cement together. Um, and then eventually um, over time, you'll end up with a sedimentary rock. So if you've got compaction and, and cementation, which is cementing it together uh, in order to get our sedimentary rock. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to take this now and I'm going to just kind of put all the pieces together and I'm going to put it in my aluminum foil and I'm going to squeeze it together. I could do this with my hands too, but if I do it with my hands, I'll get quite sticky. So it's up to you if you want to do this part with your hands or not. I'm just going to kind of squish it together. I'm going to add some pressure. Remember, I think they do compact over time as well. Um, and then I'm just going to see what I've made. And you can see it's all, because it's sugary and sticky, it's all stuck together. And so this I would consider to be a um, 
sedimentary rock now. Now this particular sedimentary rock, because it's made out of big pieces, is probably something like conglomerate, which has big jagged pieces that stuck together. Basically, they look like they're stuck together with mud that's hardened, if you've ever seen conglomerate. There's also something like um, uh, other types that look like pebbles put together. Um, you can find um, all different types of sedimentary rocks. Some look like layers of sand, sandstone looks like layers of sand hence the name. Um, but there's lots of different types of sedimentary rocks, and you might want to now look up and see some different pictures of sedimentary rock. Some of them are really pretty, some of them are really interesting, um, so there's lots of different ones. So now what we're going to do with this is I'm going to take this, I'm going to kind of roll my sedimentary rock into, um, on top of itself, so it forms a couple of layers. And now what I'm going to do is transform this into a metamorphic rock. Now metamorphic rocks form deep in the earth, when they undergo heat and pressure. That heat comes from the interior of the earth. The interior of the earth is very hot. The core is very hot. And it's hot for a couple of reasons. And one, there's radioactive decay, which is releasing lots of heat. And there's also lots of pressure from all the layers of rocks above. So we're gonna um, rub our hands together like this. And then we're going to push down on this. I'm just gonna get some nice kind of push really dip hard into that. I'm gonna stand up and do that and push down apply some heat, apply some pressure onto this until what I have formed is a metamorphic rock. Now you can see now that this is, it looks different, it's more compressed than what the sedimentary rock is, was that we had made. It's, it's, um, the pieces have lost some of their shape that we saw before, um, and so it looks a little bit different. Now, if it continues to heat up um, in the interior of the earth, eventually it's going to melt. The rock will melt. And so this is the last thing that we're going to do. And this is where we're going to need our, our hot water. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, I'm going to wrap it up um, in my aluminum foil. And then I'm going to just take my, boiling, my cup of boiling water. I'm just going to sit it on top of here for a few minutes to let that melt. Now, remember, like I said, you could melt this in the microwave, but it's going to make a mess because it's, it's candy. You wouldn't want to put it in for very long, and you wouldn't want to put it on your um, parents' favorite plates either. So you would want to just put it in there for um, maybe 10, 15 seconds to, until it melts. Um, depending what you're working with, like crayons melt really easily, um, but just give it a couple of minutes until it's melted. And if you need to replace your hot water with hot water again, you could do that. And then let's come back and see what this looks like. Now, once we've melted our rock, it's actually no longer a rock, and it's not an igneous rock yet. Remember, it needs to cool back to be solid before it's actually a rock. While it's melted, it's it's magma or lava. In our case, it's going to be lava, right, because it's above the surface of, of the earth. So well, I'm going to wait for mine to cool for a minute before we look at it. While we're waiting, let's just talk a little bit about um, metamorphic rocks. I went through that really quickly. Metamorphic rocks, there's... Um, foliated and non-foliated metamorphic rocks and that means some of them you can see layers in and some of them you can't so foliated you, it looks like a little you can see really um compressed layers like in slate um and nice those are examples of foliated metamorphic rocks and then you can have non-foliated where the crystals are in random um arrangements they're they're all mixed up they're not in any particular shape then you can't see layers and that would be things like marble and quartzite so um, as you look, you might want to look at some pictures of those different types of metamorphic rock. And then with our igneous rock, they form two types, intrusive and extrusive. The intrusive rocks are from the ones that form deep in the earth as the, as the rock, as the magma cools into rock. And, and that process is very slow, so they tend to have very large crystals, and they form things like granite. And then we also have... Um, extrusive igneous rock and those are things that form when lava cools and lava cools much more quickly than magma cools and so because of that we end up with much smaller crystals and that would be things like basalt granite and basalt are the two main um, rocks that make up the crust granite makes up the continental crust for the most part and um, basalt makes up oceanic crust for the most part and we're going to look at the the earth's plates and plate tectonics in an upcoming video so that might be something you want to, to look out for. All right, so I'm just waiting for my, my little rock here to cool. It's not quite cooled, it's also very sticky, so yours might be like this as well when you're done. So I'm just gonna pull apart my, uh, my foil so we can have a look at what the rock has turned into. And 
see how it looks different from where we started and where we've been. All right, so here is my final igneous rock, which is back where we started from. You can see now, I don't know if you, know, well, you can see that the, the pink and the orange pieces have melted together. And so if you're using different colors, you might see that it's a completely different color altogether, or you might see the colors melted together, but it's all melted together. There's, it's all kind of one consistency different from what it had been previously. So with the strawberry, you can see the difference between what the strawberry had been and what our new rock is, and then comparing it with the orange, um, what the orange piece had been like, and then what our new one is. And I'm hoping that when you do this, you'll have a chance to have done this with candy that has more interesting colors so you'll be able to see a bigger change between this. Now if you are a homeschooling parent or a teacher I'm also going to link a, a whole series of lessons that I have on rocks and the rock cycle. How you can use an inquiry approach to teach about rocks I call it mixing up the rock cycle. So I look at, um, with my students, how the rocks formed. Um, we try to then identify rocks and sort them into categories and, and work out what the three different types of rocks are before we then um, end up by doing the rock cycle lab and finally coming up with an absolute idea of what all the different types of rocks that um, were in my collection, being able to identify them by name. So if you'd like to have a look at that, I will also link that in a, a blog post I've written about my mixing up the rock cycle lesson plan. Um, it's actually a whole unit plan. Uh, it's a great way to kick off a, a rock unit. In fact, it's a great way to do the majority of your of a rock unit if you teach that. So I hope you find that useful. Um, and then I hope you look forward to our upcoming videos. So I will see you next time and thank you for joining Mrs. Wilson Science.